Thank you so much. I'm so excited right now because I get to talk with two of my colleagues from GitHub about one of my favorite things, which is GitHub Advanced Security. This is Brian, this is Justin. So, all right, set this up for me. For the people out there who might not know, yes. what is GitHub Advanced Security? Well, I'm glad you asked. So, for those who might not know, uh, GitHub Advanced Security is functionality that's built directly into GitHub, and it basically helps you, as a developer, write code that's not going to get hacked. Yes! I know, yes. like, it's, it's so important. So, we have functionality in there. Um, probably a lot of people are familiar and love Dependabot. That's one yeah. of our really, really popular ones that uh, helps you find any vulnerable open source you may be using. We all love open source. We do. Um, find any of it that may be out of date, may be vulnerable, and help get you upgraded to a more secure version. Yes. So that's one pillar of it. Um, another pillar of it is CodeQL a really, really powerful static analysis engine that's going to go through your own code. Not, not open source code that you're borrowing, but right. your own code your own that you're stuff. writing yourself um, and find any kind of application security vulnerabilities in there, your SQL injections, your cross-site scriptings. And then finally, we have a really, really powerful secret scanner. We heard about this in the keynote. We're going to talk about it a little bit more today, how important it is to keep secrets out of your source control. Yes. Um, so we have really powerful capabilities across the board there. Fantastic. All right, so uh, Justin, I think you're going to show us some stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about like what are some of the problems that, that, that GitHub Advanced Security can solve? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I'm happy to maybe show more yes. than talk. Please, um, please show us. And so, you know, when we think about uh, security and bringing that to developers, everyone talks about shifting left, and I think there's no better place to meet developers than in a pull request. Yeah. Because this is the time when you're trying to make changes. It's the time you're seeking feedback from the people on your team trying to figure out how to get things done. Yeah. And so, you know, you notice this is a pull request uh, Brian's been working on here, and we've and, actually and got. I made, I made a mistake. Like I put, I put a security vulnerability in this code. I feel yes, terrible. Yes, hey, but you're the developer. That's okay. I, okay. That's okay. Yeah, okay. It happens the all the time. <laughs> and so, you know, what you can see uh, very quickly in line here is, you know, we have uh, insights from code scanning where it's actually telling us that we found a SQL injection a query built from user-controlled sources, and you know, this is the sort of thing that I can. Uh, you know, go into the details, I can read all about these and get a whole bunch of boilerplate information. But ultimately, you know, what we think makes even more impact is bringing developers those insights that are customized to them. Yeah. So we're using Copilot directly in the product without any friction. You don't have to ask it questions. We just sort of do this all seamlessly. And we provide a whole bunch of explanation on exactly what the problem is, why it's a problem. And um, the most important part is we actually come back with a specific change. There we go. So we have Copilot that actually suggests the fix. We can look at this, we can decide, yes, I like this, or you know, if I wanted to go and edit it just a little bit, make some changes, maybe to fix with my style guide, right. I can do that. But this reduces that time to remediate really dramatically over you know, what other tools are able to do because this gives the developer the solution yes. right there where they're coding. And what I actually really like about that, and I think this is an important thing to like point out as we talk about with Copilots, is that you are still in control, right? Yeah. Developer's still in control. And as you said, if I need to make an edit to match a style guide or something isn't quite right, I can do that, but it's going to give me a great starting place. Exactly, exactly. And by putting that in the pull request, you know, we're not bringing people down with a thousand alerts that they have on their security debt. This is only something that I screwed up in this pull request. So it's really bite-sized. When people see it, they're dealing with one or two of these. They're not dealing with 10 or 100. And so we see really, really good remediation rates. We see a 7x improvement over industry standards in terms of how often people are fixing these. And so it makes a big difference to meet developers where they are with these insights. And, and one thing I really love about this is that you don't have to be a security expert to go fix a security problem. Like, yes. it's not. We shouldn't expect every developer in the world to be, you know, a security no. guru. Like, and now here, like, we are literally saying, here is the exact code snippet that's going to fix your code and make you more secure. I love that. No, and that's really great. And so, okay, that's the, remedi the remediation bit. What else do you have that you can talk about for me, Ryan? Well, uh, that's that's a great segue. I'm going to switch places yeah. with Justin yeah. here. Go right ahead. Um, um, so we are, again, like, we showed how we're using Copilot with advanced security to improve remediation. Yeah. But that's like one half of the coin. The other half is, or the other side of the coin is about detection. Yeah. Can we use it to detect problems in the first place? And it turns out we can. So 
I'm gonna, those of you who saw the, uh, the keynote this morning with Julia Lucen and John Lambert, and John was highlighting the importance of secret, like finding all the secrets that you may have accidentally already exposed. Like I said, when we turn on secret scanning for organizations, literally, like almost 100%, 99.999% of orgs that we turn it on for have secrets somewhere yes. in there. I mean, because honestly, who amongst us, I mean, and I, I mean this genuinely, like we have all, in, a, in an app that we've written, we've committed a secret and totally. put it in our source code. And like, you don't think about it until you realize, oh no, if this is available, this, this could be, you know, this is bad. It, it's, it's horrible. Like a, a, an attacker gets in through whatever mechanism right. and now they've got the keys to the kingdom right there. I'm just going to so go things. through the source control and now I'll be able to expand. Even in demo systems, you hear people say like, well, it's only a cred for a demo system. Except is that's, it really, that, yeah. that's all, yeah, no. I mean, and, and the way that secret scanning works now is that we have partners and, and they, it scans based on certain set parameters and, and whatnot, but there's more that we can do. Totally. So we've always been really good at finding what we call highly identifiable secrets, things like SAS tokens and, and PATs that have highly identifiable structure. But where, right. what has been challenging in the past is finding loose passwords, things just like this is a this is a user password or this is a server password right. to authenticate onto this box. This it's, is not that I wrote right. and I didn't really think about how I should have, you know, properly tokenized what I'm doing and I put it in my code. Right. Exactly. So, so here here I, I switched over to the, the secret scanning findings in advanced security and here we found a pad, we found a couple API keys. Again, this is all stuff we've been able to find, like historically. Right. But when you try to find the loose password, it's not so much that you can't find them, it's that you can't find them with accuracy. Right. If you go to, if you use classical mechanisms to try to detect loose passwords, you'll find it, but you'll probably also find a lot of garbage. And as a developer, if you're going through all my alerts to go fix, and I've got thousands of them, and maybe only one in a hundred is legitimate, it's not useful. You're just right. you're just going to discard the entire thing. All the value of it is it's lost. It's going to go away because that's the, uh, back to what you were saying. Meeting developers where they are. That means right. like making it actually something you want to use. Because if you're not going to use it, and this I think goes with security all around, then it's not going to be adopted if it's not easy to use. Yeah, and, and exactly. we talk a lot about you know focusing on outcomes over activity. If you're spending all of your time triaging false positives, you're not actually reducing risk. Right. And so having that really strongly opinionated perspective of we're only going to show you things we think are real makes such a big difference in developer trust and in the security outcomes on the other side. That's great. And that's why we brought Copilot to bear on the problem. Awesome. So it turns out like, what classical methods are awful at detecting loose passwords with accuracy. Copilot does a phenomenal job. So here, like, I've gone over to secret scanning alerts, and we're just still distinguishing between high confidence and other, but here I found Seahawks fan 12 uh -huh. and P4 dollar dollar password bang bang. It's done a really good job of picking out just the things in my code base that were actually passwords and all the false positives. It has said, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that's a real thing. I'm not gonna burden you with that just burn these down. It's, so it's cool. phenomenal use of AI to, to solve a real security problem. No, I mean, I think that's so important that you point out, right, because this is something that the traditional methods weren't great at, right? Like, you can write all the regexes in the world, but it's going to be fine, hard to find those, those really hard to find things. But exactly. this is something AI, because of all the data it's ingesting, all the things it can look at, is actually really perfect at. Exactly, exactly. And it's been amazing. You know, we started work on this feature, you know, uh, 12 months ago. And when we started, we were using GPT-3 and a bunch of the engine there. And the, the advancements in the AI technology over the last year have been mind boggling in terms of how much has reduced false positives, how much better the recall rate is. And so I think, you know, folks that are maybe nervous about dipping their toe into this arena, like I think you're gonna be impressed with exactly how good it's gotten. That's really great. And I actually think that's a great point you brought up, the fact, the fact that like when we started doing this, we were on one model of AI stuff. Right. But we're continuing to iterate and innovate and update those things. And that also means that you know, as, as developers, the tools you're using are going to get better over time too. Absolutely, with no change that you have to take. It just magically, it's just magically gets better. There. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Okay, all right. When is, when is all this stuff available? Is it available now? When can people get started? So this is all coming really soon. It is in, uh, in a beta pilot right now, but you're going to see a G, G of it very, very soon. He very, gets very soon. obliquely. And that's not <laughs> the only thing. We've got a bunch more stuff coming that we, we didn't have time to show today. But again, as Justin was saying, like we're innovating so fast. Copilot is so powerful. Yeah. We're like, consider the same kinds of problems we're talking to too. And I 
you're going to see more improvements and more scope in the very near future. I love it. All right, so stay tuned for more. All of this is coming very soon, as well as some other things that, you know, we're hinting about, so, so stay tuned. And you can check out more for yourself at gh.io slash advanced security. Thank you so much, Justin. Thank you so Thank much, Thank you Brian. so much, Christina. All right. Take care, everybody.